Um, and Mark Cuban joins us now on the phone. Mark, are you there? Yeah, what's up, guys? What's yeah. up, Jimmy? I, <laughs> I really appreciate you calling in, Mark. Literally, I, I was thinking of you as we were having this conversation. Um, stocks down today. You know, the, the guidance was a, a bit weak. Tell us where your position is now on this, this company and this stock. Same as it's always been. I haven't sold any shares. Um, I'm still very bullish on it. You know, they always offer weak guidance. It's always the, the discussion the day after earnings. You know, the way I look at it is, first, you know, they're, what, $145 billion market cap. You know, is that a legitimate market cap for the second biggest and best media company in the world after Disney? And I think it is. And, two, I think all, all the trends are going in their favor more so than their competitors. So, for instance, Netflix is global. And if you look at what's happened in the technology world with deep fakes, you're going to see um, content, movies, videos, etc., go from being dubbed and closed captioned to looking like everything spoken in the native language over the next five years. And you're going to be able to back update a lot, not all, but a lot of your, your libraries. Being global and having that technology is going to be a huge advantage for Netflix. So that, that's part one. Part two, in terms of um, smart TVs, every single new smart TV that comes out has Netflix as an option. Heck, you go into the gym, every smart workout device has Netflix as an option. Every, you know, it's ubiquitous, not just here, but it's becoming more ubiquitous um, it's becoming more ubiquitous globally as well. And so I think those are two key trends that work in their favor. And I don't see their competition negatively impacting that um, at all. But the, the interesting thing is, Mark, of what Joe, you know, brought up a little while ago, suggesting that Netflix was no longer a quote unquote hyper growth company, but yet has a hyper growth valuation to you. How, how do you reconcile that? I, I mean, you don't have to be, when you get big, the law of big numbers takes over, and hypergrowth is relative. If you look at it just in terms of the United States, sure, it's not growing nearly as quickly, but, you know, saturation is also an issue. When, when you have, you know, so many customers, there's, there's a finite number you can get. But globally, everything, you know, if, if you just look at what they're doing in other countries, it is hypergrowth. And so you can't be just looking at the United States and saying, okay, that reflects the whole story. It doesn't. Streaming media, entertainment, content is a global story now, and streaming and technology enables it even more so. And so, yes, you know, the growth here in the United States isn't as dramatic as it was, but you can't say the same thing about the rest of the world. It's just as dramatic, if not more so. Well, Netflix is making the world a much smaller place for content. Uh, Mark, uh, first of all, it's great that you call in. I really love that idea of market cap analysis. I think that the market cap is, uh, just, is, is actually justified given the fact that they're a worldwide company. Weren't you impressed on the conference call when Reed just said, look, we're artificial intelligence. We know what you want, which allows us to make content a little bit cheaper. Wasn't that a stunning moment on the call? Yes, it wasn't surprising at all. I mean, it was reflective of exactly how they approached their world. You know, and again, that is... When you have data, data is the new oil, right? And that data, particularly when you're becoming more and more of a global company, becomes increasingly and exponentially more valuable. And so if you look at this just as a domestic story, you're going to be disappointed. If you look at this and say, you know, merge Africa, every continent outside the Western, um, the, every, every Africa, you know, India, China, all these new markets that they're starting to go into – are all growing markets where the technology and the, the price performance is all working in their favor. And then the technology, again, so that you can take content and manipulate it so that it works in any environment, in any language, that works out well for them. And to your point, Jim, using AI and the data that they have, they can anticipate what works. And you see that reflected in the fact that across all the streaming competitors, they have five, ten times more tentpole products then, then, you know, Disney has Mandalorian and, and what else? Hulu um, has one show. You know, Amazon Prime has maybe two or three. And you can go down and create a long list of ten or more shows on Netflix where you can't wait to see the, the next series, the next um, season of the show. And you, that, that's just huge. 